Tiene que poner el modo presentador, luego él lo pasa, ¿no? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alexio Pico, and I'm very happy to have you all here for this uh, webinar about uh, eco incentive measures in support of sustainable freight transport services. It's one of the webinars that we are always uh, often organize. And uh, today uh, we have the pleasure to present some very interesting re results about a project called the Mid-Atlantic Eco Bonus that has the end of its uh, lifetime. Uh, we had recently in Lisbon the final conference of the event and we had also a number of other workshops discussing with a number of uh, maritime and transport stakeholders about uh, the project in, in Brussels and also a, a meeting, dedicated meeting at the European Parliament. The presentation today, we have, I have with me two very uh, high level, uh, let's say, uh, professional experts to talk uh, about uh, the, the project, specifically Antonio Gongora, that's the project coordinator for, of Mid-Atlantic Eco Bonus project from Puerto del Estado, and we have Carlos Alvarez Cascos, shipping, shipping business consultant, and uh, also, let me say, the, the mind behind uh, the external cost calculator. The topic today is uh, to discuss how uh, eco-incentive measures can be used to, to support sustainable freight transport services. Uh, it is a very, you know, ha ha hot topic in a way. In the past, we had a number of uh, examples of this uh, and also actually running a number of examples about uh, these uh, eco-incentive measures. It is important to say that uh, those measures uh, are, and the project is addressing those measures in a, in a very broad way, to, uh, in not on a, on a specific mode, but as, as a general tool to be applied to incentivize, to incentivize uh, envir environmental merits, and you will see later on why. And the project itself had an example of how to use those tools and those eco-incentives on the maritime transport, on the short sea shipping in the Med and Atlantic uh, area, as the name of the project is, uh, is about. So I wouldn't take uh, much more time. I will only explain you how uh, it's going to work. We have the first the presentation of the study with the overall approach and main outcomes from Antonio Gongor, and then the external cost calculator with examples on how the uh, the, the approach on eco incentive could work from Carlos Cascos. Then we have a question time and also a little bit of pause. We have prepared for you two questions that we would like you to, to answer. In terms of the question time, how would you like to ask the question? We cannot uh, have a, a voice interaction because we, we are too many, but you can write your uh, question in, uh, on the, on, in the tab on the right. Uh, please do it. Uh, whenever you want during the, the webinar. So if you have any kind of uh, uh, question, any kind of uh, issue that you would like to discuss with us, please text text it and yeah, we will uh, at the end uh, address your question and oh, I, I will address it or uh, I will pass this question to Antonio or Carlos. So uh, ready to go. I will uh, then uh, pass the floor to, to Antonio to, for the first presentation. We have one hour totally, so it's up to you, Antonio. The floor is yours and uh, have a good uh, uh, webinar with us. Okay, so um, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you, Alexio, for uh, for your presentation. I guess that everyone is now uh, having a look to our screen with my first presentation. Uh, as Alexio has introduced, I will go 
um, with a brief presentation on the main features and outcomes of our project. I expect around 20 minutes, and then I will give the floor to Carlos, which is here with me, to continue with a more specific presentation on one of the, let's say, I would say the most relevant tool that we have developed for the case of the motorways of the sea, which is external cost calculator. So again, thank you very much to you all for joining this webinar, and I hope this is interesting to you. Of course, at the end of the presentation, we are open to your questions and also further to this webinar to uh, any interaction that you might uh, consider uh, appropriate. So uh, going to the first, well, just a very brief introduction on who we are. We, we are four member states, so this is a, 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 an institutional study under the CEF framework. So in a way, we are working for the Commission to find out some uh, possible uh, applications of this eco-incentive approach. As Alexio briefly introduced, uh, the Mid-Atlantic Eco-Bonus Action is mainly a policy study. So this is not an implementing action. This is a study which is intended to the debate. Uh, uh, the, the, in this regard, it ends at proposal level for the further discussion during mainly the next year and looking forward to the CEF2 regulation from the net financial framework uh, running from 2021 to 2027, which is now currently under negotiation in the European institutions. Uh, the aim of the study is to analyze a possible common EU approach to eco-incentive measures in order to accelerate the development of the sustainable free transport services component of the uh, trans-European network. So this is aimed as a kind of accelerator, okay, of the uh, uh, this sustainable uh, feature of the of the freight transport services, and it is open. The approach is open to all modes of transport and EU regions. Although we have developed a complete example in a particular case, in a particular case, a complete ex-ante analysis to prove the impacts of uh, of this approach, and particularly we took the motorways of the sea in the West Med and the Atlantic regions. So regarding sustainable free transport services, as you well know, the uh, uh, European Union and also the member states have been uh, uh, um, uh, looking for this goal through the last almost 30 years since the first white, white paper in 1991, with the main goals, which is the, re the, the, the reduction of uh, uh, carbon emissions, air pollution, and social costs, and with different means of achievement, not only through technology, but also through integration, optimization, model balance, and so on. And, and as you see in this, let's see, a schemat let's say a schematic timeline, you see how the different means of support from the European Union and the member states have been uh, evolving and adapting to the uh, environmental challenges uh, throughout the time. So starting with the road, as you know, the Euro standard uh, uh, for the, uh, mainly for the uh, air pollution, uh, uh, for the emissions. And then more recently in the maritime sector, as you see with the next 2020 sulfur cap, uh, up, uh, starting by 2020. And now, as you know, for the next framework for the mid and long term, the CO2 uh, challenges, which is now very much into the debate within the Paris Agreement recently in Poland and so on. So, uh, and you see how the support, the, the way of uh, supporting these uh, uh, um, challenges have been changing since the first Marco Polo program, which was mainly focusing on, on the model shift action to the currently more uh, uh, supporting to green technologies and digitalization and so on within the SAF framework in the new 10 let's say, era on the, in the new 10 regulation, which is more focusing on the funding gaps uh, to cover the financial risk of these environmental, let's say, investments. Uh, and now the SAF2 is under discussion. And this is why our project tried to uh, put uh, a, another approach into the debate. Also, as you know, the road has been tucked tackled also by the charging uh, um, approach. So the, the road is also using the charging principle to uh, try to compensate the external costs that are produced by this mode of transport. And last but not least, the member states have been always supporting, uh, in a way, this uh, uh, intermodality or uh, uh, 
modal balance between the different modes of transport with different schemes uh, uh, throughout Europe uh, uh, and um, in a way incentivizing through different approaches uh, uh, the uh, model balance, the model C. So just to summarize this uh, evolution and for you to know and to be to frame the, the where our action is uh, uh, looking for is okay this is where we come from and where we would like to go in a way with this proposal. Uh, regarding the institutional action we have in the first place the regulation of course we have regulation environmental regulation setting the market standards for all modes of transport regarding how this mode should uh, perform we have the euro standard we have now the sulfur director in the coming years we probably will have uh, regulation on the co2 so regulation is let's say the rule and uh, what we all have to do to compensate in a way these uh, uh, um, targets the european institutions they put in the table incentives to stimulate the sustainable behavior of the market the first one is charging which is let's say the stick uh, the charging and it's mainly uh, uh, focusing in the road currently so the, the road is the main let's say uh, target for the charging uh, type of incentive negative incentive but in incentive, incentive in a way and then we have the grants, which is the carrot in the others in the other way. So grants, in a way, so so, uh, so far they have been oriented to compensate costs. So this is the principle of the grants so far to compensate for the costs that the promoters of the different actions, whether investments or operational as, uh, actions, incur to uh, uh, cope with this um, sustainable behavior. So we have investment costs to compensate investment costs of operation operating costs, and we have the examples uh, on, in the operating cost. This was the principle of Marco Polo, as you know, which now is discontinued, is ended. Okay, this approach is no more into the uh, uh, portfolio of grants in the Commission, uh, and then we have the investment cost, which is currently being addressed through the CEF, mainly trying to cover the funding gap of these investments. What we uh, think is that the eco-incentive approach could uh, um, introduce a, a complement, not to substitute, but to complement this approach on compensating cost for market viability with a, a kind of incentive targeting actual socio-environmental outcomes, irrespective of the financial risks which are taken by the promoters. No matter if they win or lose, the goal is to, uh, uh, to, to target, to, to attain the social environmental outcomes and this is the approach somehow of the mid atlantic eco bonus this way we could accelerate the market update this is somehow the, the the idea of course we have also the financial support the financial instruments as you know as part of the incentivizing portfolio by the european institutions so which would be the principles of this common eu approach that we are proposing for eco incentives okay we are based on uh, relevant recommendations Marco Polo ending is really useful to analyze which are the recommendations to the further development, further supporting to, to uh, eco incentives. So we took this reference as a very relevant uh, basis. Also, we have the regulations, the CEF and the TNT regulation. The regulation are state aids because, as you will see, we will propose a combined effort from member states and EU. So national budgets are involved in our approach and should be compatible with the state aid regulation. And the main principles taken from this reference, and we, this is just a very brief summary of the main ones, maybe, of course, any incentive uh, should uh, um, ensure no market distortion, of course. Uh, it's also, uh, the, 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 the incentive should target actual social environmental outcomes in market conditions. So the goal is environment, it's not market, it's environment. Uh, the, therefore, the incentive calculation should be based exclusively on demonstrated social environmental merits. And this is very relevant because this leads us to the need of measure and monetize external costs. So in the funding principle, let's say the important thing is to uh, uh, verify the cost, the financial analysis, the cost benefit analysis, and so on and so on. In this approach, the relevant is to uh, measure and to monetize the actual external cost savings that a, a specific action is attaining. Of course, 
uh, we think that the approach should be technologically agnostic. So on how this environmental merit is achieved, whether it is through technology or through behaving, uh, increasing capacity, being more efficient or, or whatever. So this is technologically agnostic. Uh, another important principle is that this is to be uh, supported in a combined effort from the EU and the member states. So this is not only uh, for the EU support, but also for the member states support, trying to coordinate the efforts that in, in practice, both uh, national and EU levels are developing, as we saw, saw in the previous slide. Uh, it should be transferable to all EU regions. This is not for the maritime sector, this is for the transport sector, although we have taken an example on the motorways of the sea, and should be applicable to all modes and EU regions. Uh, of course, compatible with the state rules, as we said, and very important, funding conditional upon results. So this is uh, just to pay for the merit that are really attained by uh, uh, a specific action. And in addition to these principles, uh, any financial support uh, through this eco-incentive approach should be based on an ex-ante analysis, showing and demonstrating whether is the EU uh, added value of the action. And this is the Mid-Atlantic Ecobonus example. So there are twofold or two tracks. On the one hand, we have the principles of the common approach, and then we have the specific case that we have developed as, as example. And imagine any mode of transport, any region at EU level, what should the member states uh, interested in promoting a, a, a specific eco-incentive scheme, what, what they should uh, uh, propose? Well, they should propose a targeted market, uh, a goal, which is the the, uh, the 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 main goal of the of the scheme, and then how the environmental merit is incentivized. So in our case, the target the market is the motorways of the sea, the particular segment of the road one ferry industry, which is servicing alternative routes to the road transport in the west and uh, west Met and Atlantic regions. This is the typical approach of other schemes in the past, as the Italian eco bonus and so on. We could have uh, selected another one. This is the specific segment that we have uh, developed in the example. The goal in this case is not the model shift as it used to be in the past. The goal in this case is to uh, perform a greener, uh, uh, to have a greener performance of the maritime leg. So the goal is on the maritime side in this case. Yeah? And how the envir environmental merit is incentivized, how it is calculated. Okay, this is with the typical approach. So uh, uh, it will be incentivized, uh, uh, calculating the external cost savings from freight units using the maritime service compared to the road only alternative due to the green action, which is the goal uh, of the uh, Mid Atlantic Economics example. So, uh, how uh, in a way this could work? The, because the ex ante analysis at the end of the day is a simulation exercise. So it should be based on a, on a common methodology. Of course, each market, each mode would have its own tools, but in a way, this uh, uh, slide could show how the common approach to this, uh, to this methodology could work. So you have to define the eligibility criteria, you have to define some tools for the simulation. Of course, you have to make you will have to make the simulation to estimate the budget needs and you will have to ensure the legal consistency and the administrative and technological backup of the process in case of implementation. What is particular for this case is what is in green. These green uh, boxes would be different uh, uh, with other mode of transport or, or other region. In our case, we have developed three tools. and uh, One of them, which it is the main one, and Possibly it, it would be uh, the only one to be common to any approach, to any, let's say to any example, is the external cost calculator, which is highlighted a little bit in a darker uh, uh, green color. Uh, and this is this is this will will be part of the second part of the presentation. Um, the in our case, what we have simulated is this market, as you see, we have taken a set of lines in the Mediterranean and also in the Atlantic. Most of them are real lines, which are currently operating, and which is the main uh, eligibility criteria, just to summarize the most important. Okay, first of all, we took the Italian Ecobonus approach, which means that the incentive is 
directed through demand. So it is not given to the ship owner, although the ship owner is the one which is supposed to invest in the grid in the green action, but it's, the, it's given to the truck. So uh, uh, this is relevant. This is uh, an approach that have proved to be positive in the past. And on the maritime leg, the eligibility criteria is that the ship owners should uh, uh, um, demonstrate a green action. So, so there should be a green action in the maritime leg to be eligible to this uh, scheme. And this leads us to the need of measuring the, uh, um, let's say, the, the uh, improve of the environmental performance of the whole transport uh, system in this market. Which scenarios are we simulating? Okay, we are compared because this is a simulation exercise, as I said. No? So we are comparing basically two scenarios running from 2020 to 2024, so a five years period. The base scenario is uh, what we called, uh, let's say, the regulation merit, we, we could call in the maritime, which is no green action in the maritime leg is taken beyond the strict compliance with the regulation with the sulfur cap so no eco incentive is given we will see in the calculator how this is demonstrated uh, this is for the strict compliance with the regulation so all vessels using the mgo on a ultra low sulfur uh, fuel to comply with the regulation this leads to an average increase of 12 percent in the sea rates leading to a model backshift effect which we will simulate uh, uh, in front of this base scenario, we have the green scenario that we simulate as, uh, uh, as some, uh, with, with the assumption that all vessels switch to LNG. Of course, this is a hypothesis and this is just an example. We are not saying that we are uh, favoring of LNG or whatever. We just say that currently in the maritime sector, this would be the uh, most the, the most green action so for us it's important because they it will give us the maximum budget needs in case this would go for implementation but this is just only for budgeting purposes so with this uh, scenario uh, all vessels switching to lng the maximum incentive would be given this is uh, uh, this uh, will imply uh, uh, investments uh, uh, for 343 million euros of additional costs uh, uh, compared to a conventional vessel so this is the goal this in, to, to trigger these investments and we assume that uh, the sea rates are maintained so there is a model shift effect as long as with the sea rates maintained the road would receive an incentive so we will modelize this effect so the final impact assessment would be the subtracting the base scenario from the green scenario so the eco incentive uh, is not uh, being uh, uh, um, uh, is not taking the merit of the regulation so we subtract the regulation merit and we obtain the final impact assessment uh, the methodology if you remember the boxes that we present in the previous slide running run in this way so we have a, a, with the standard cost calculator we estimate the merit of this unit using the maritime road instead of the only road alternative then we introduce this equi incentive in a calibrated transport model tool which give us the model shift effect uh, model back shift in the case of the basic scenario because of the increase of the sea rate also the ex total externality savings due to the green action in, in, in one hand and on the other hand due to the model shift effect which is the consequence not the goal of the eco incentive scheme and also we will have the total budget needs and the additional incomes through the additional demand that the ship owners would receive in the uh, green scenario meaning this is the these additional incomes uh, are the ones uh, supposed to trigger the investments and this is assessed by the ship owners respective tool which is the third tool so this is how it runs in the example the external cost calculator will be presented afterwards i'm just highlighting here the main principle so this is designed ad hoc for this example is taking the main uh, external cost factors uh, the typical external cost factors is not considering the standard cost of infrastructure this is a level play field between the road and the maritime is prepared to measure different green actions not only technological action also increasing capacity reducing speed and so on uh, and it is calculated specifically for each vessel so not with averages on the maritime leg but just featuring the precise vessel of each line 
It is including also the impacts at ports and due to road access. So a, a truck going to a port to take a vessel would uh, 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 generate higher impacts because this is a urban area and we are considering it. And of course, we are taking into consideration the CO2 impact uh, in the different scenarios of costs and uh, of this uh, emission. This is more or less the shape of the tool. We will present it afterwards, so I will not uh, take time here. Just uh, uh, to, to underline that is with this tool where we uh, obtain the um, the incentive per unit and per line. Yeah? This uh, uh, using this calculator in the green scenario, you see here the different equi incentives per line and per unit that would be received by the, the, the lines that have been simulated. And you see that this is uh, there is a great var variety of intensities, even if the green action is the same, which is LNG. And this is because there are other factors, of course, that are operating in, in this uh, uh, merit, let's say. Uh, on the one hand, we have the geographical factor, which is typical in the maritime, which is normally a shortcut uh, between the maritime uh, alternative and the road-only route. But we have also other factors that are very important, uh, uh, which has to do with the behaving of the maritime leg regarding the capacity and the speed of the vessel. So uh, it's not only technology in this case, it's not only LNG, it's also uh, how uh, uh, big is the ship, so how efficient is the, uh, uh, the transport per unit and also the speed, which is very much related with the uh, consumption of fuel. If we simulate this eco incentive as a discount of the C rate, we consider that the C rates are maintained, but for simulation purposes, we consider that this eco incentive could be uh, simulated as a discount and we enter it into the transport modeling tool, then we have the effects. So this is more or less the idea. This tool has been calibrated also, also ad hoc for the targeted markets. Uh, and uh, the aim is to replicate the market performance and to prepare the tool for simulation. We have uh, really, I will not give dedicate too much time here, but this was a very scientific exercise to calibrate this model with the existing data and using the typical modeling approach, the four models, the global mobility, the spatial distribution, the model choice and the route assignment, which is the shares between the different lines and using the, the typical logic uh, formulations. The main variables of this model are the GDP evolution for the global mobility and the transport prices for both the road and the maritime and the, maritime, and the frequencies on the maritime for the uh, model shift between road and maritime and also between the different maritime uh, lines. So what we have at the end of the day is a tool that is calibrated, is statistically significant. So this is okay for simulation. And you can see in these two uh, tables how this uh, tool is giving good results if you compare the real data in the WestMed with the data that are uh, produced with the model modeling tool. So yes, this is, uh, prepared, let's say, for a, a simulation, including this period, as you know, the effect of the financial crisis, which is complicated to, to simulate, and also the Italian economy. So if we introduce these, um, uh, uh, these incentives that are calculated from the calculator uh, into the modeling tool, what we have as an outcome is the number of units uh, that are shifted in the green scenario or back shifted to the road in the base scenario due to the increase of the C rate in the MGO scenario. Of course, we have the estimation of the total external cost savings due to the green action on the one hand and due to the model back shift effect, which is an additional external cost saving uh, or cost effect uh, uh, as a consequence of the incentive. Then we have the total budget needs, the total equity incentive given through demand, and the additional incomes to the ship owner, which would give us the, uh, um, let's say, the the, the 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 path to the ship owner's perspective tool in order to assess if these incomes are enough to trigger the 343 million euros investments that the ship owners are supposed to do to invest to uh, for the LNG conversion. So just in a nutshell and very schematically, this is 
the um, the 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 main results of the of the uh, simulation exercise. You see, we have the green scenario, the base scenario, and what we consider is the impact assessment of the scheme, which is the uh, the green scenario uh, um, minus the base scenario. What, what you see is that in the green scenario, there is a shift effect, a model shift effect of uh, roughly 300,000 units from the road only to the models of the C uh, uh, alternative. And also, of course, there are incomes for the road because they receive the incentive. This 148.1 million euros would be the total incentive given to the road. So this is a direct benefit to the, to the road holders. And uh, this uh, um, additional demand, these additional units would, would uh, grant additional incomes to the SIP owner uh, um, up to 164.2 million euros. In the basic scenario, we have the opposite. We have a model back shift effect due to the increase on the C rate, which is estimated at uh, 263,000 units back to the road and also road loses and ship owners loses because road which is staying at the maritime uh, sector at the maritime uh, alternative would be uh, uh, would, would would see an increase in the sea rate so they would have loses and also the ship owners would have loses because of the units that are you know, back to the road so yes there are loses in the uh, base scenario so the impact assessment, what we uh, uh, what we see is that at the end of the day, because of these, if we compare the two scenarios, what we would have is 505, roughly 550,000 units of the road, and also a benefit, which is the uh, the adding the, the two benefits for the road and the sea ports. But the important thing here is, okay, which would be the actual benefits in the green scenario? So. Yes, with the additional incomes of the 164 million euros to the ship owners, would it be enough to uh, uh, attractive enough to to trigger 343 million euros investment of green actions? And this is what we are assessing in the ship owners perspective tool, because of course the ship owners they have other alternatives to LNG and also uh, other alternatives to comply with the regulation. Uh, so and also other financial instruments, for example, through this funding gap approach that we, we have seen, other uh, approaches for the funding uh, support. So is this attractive enough to the SIP owners? This is what we did with the SIP owners perspective tool, closing the cycle of the of the simulation. Uh, what this tool does is basically compare financial ratios uh, between uh, for, for the green action for this investment in the two situations with and without a green incentive to assess whether is the to what extent this is attractive for the fee owners. The tool has been calibrated with the additional incomes on the one side coming from the modeling transport tool and also with the additional investment and operating costs incurred by the green action. So uh, we put in the incomes side uh, the additional incomes and in the cost the additional cost because of the additional investment and also the operating uh, cost uh, uh, in this case. So um comparing the LNG to the MGO uh, vessel. We have used the latest reference for the MB, DMB, uh, DMBGL uh, um, uh, company uh, regarding the LNG investments and also for the field costs and the, uh, uh, and the operating costs, we have the, um, the latest reference from the market. So the price of the fuel for the LNG and for the MGO uh, with these estimations that you're seeing in the slide. Also, we have uh, uh, used assumptions regarding the weight average cost of capital and the residual value of the investments, which of course can be modified with direct entries in the tool. We have taken this 8% and 5% as a reference. This is somehow the shape of the tool and we see, uh, we take the WestMed uh, table as example we see here uh, five lines and uh, what we see is that uh, the, the main outcomes of this uh, assess, uh, assessment is that okay yes the financial returns of the investments of the LNG additional investment are clearly improved and as you see you can see in the two latest rows of the table which are the financial uh, return uh, um, outcomes in the situation without and with eco-incentive, the last one in blue, 
and you see how the financial ratios are uh, improved. So yes, the 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 the, uh, the paybacks are reduced and the uh, internal rates of return are increased. Uh, but if you see, and this is I think an interesting outcome in this particular case of the LNG, is that only in one case the eco incentive is determinant to the viability of the investment. So meaning that the market could go for this on his own with no need of eco incentive. So the eco incentive in this case is uh, is act, uh, 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 acting as a catalyst of this uh, um, option. So it's trying to push for the greenest alternative possible because ship owners has, have other alternatives to comply with the regulation. Uh, we see also that the co-financing rate that they would be receiving if, we, if you compare the additional incomes they receive through the coincidence with the investments are placed over the typical 30% of the uh, conventional programs through the current Connecting Euro facility. So this is also attractive for the ship owner if, if, if let's say, if they believe this uh, story, if I may say this word, if they believe this approach, they would receive more support at the end of the day uh, and directly through demand than if they would uh, uh, submit a specific proposal to a conventional program in the SEF uh, um, uh, tool now, in the SEF instrument. Uh, and also it's important to see how the weight of the operating costs remain within the state, the state rules limits of, for maximum intensity. So. The, the let's say the the support the, the aid that they would receive and directly is below far below uh, uh, you see it in the in the in the red box additional incomes uh, compared to operation far below the 30 percent which is typical in the state aid rules for the maritime sector uh, so just to to summarize the main results this is what we see is a kind of a leverage effect due to this approach. By giving 148 million euros to the users of the maritime services, the ship owners would receive 164 million euros of additional incomes that would trigger or stimulate or accelerate or you know stimulate the ship owners to go for the greenest alternative in this case, which is the LNG. Uh, so triggering investments up to 343 million euros. And this would lead to a significant external cost savings due to the green action on the one hand, but also due to the model shift uh, effect, which is uh, produced because of the nature of this approach. Uh, as you will see now with the calculator, we have the opportunity to to split these savings in the different emission factors so you can have the specific savings devoted to co2 to sulfur to nox to accidents you will see now in a minute with the presentation uh, by my colleague carlos and uh, from the perspective of the uh, european commission and also from the member states this budget of 148 million euros is the budget of the scheme. So this is the budget that should be or would be submitted for, for EU co-financing in the event of this uh, uh, funding objective or priority within the SAF uh, instrument. Uh, the, so this is a budget to be supported by the member states and the, uh, uh, co with the co-financing of the European uh, Union budget. Some final remarks, just to, to end, sorry if I went, it, it's too, too, a lot of information in, in a very short time, so we try to summarize the most relevant. So some final remarks for the, you know, for, for, for remembering, you know, for, for, the, for, the, for the debate, I would say, in the coming uh, uh, year. So yes, this is, this, this is the budget, as I said, the, the 148 millions to be, uh, uh, supported by the member states and the EU. And the interesting thing is that with this approach, we are ensuring a multilateral and regional perspective, which means that this approach is, is on the member states to target the market and to uh, uh, um, develop the specific tools for its market, because market is, transport market is very different depending on the region, 
and, and even within a, a particular mode of transport. The Atlantic has nothing to do with the Mediterranean, with the uh, you know with the uh, Baltic. Uh, so different areas has diff have different approaches. So yes, this would ensure a multilateral and regional perspective, but based on common principles, which is very relevant if we want a coordinated effort and would want also EU money, let's say EU support in. Also important to underline that with this approach, the risk of demand is reduced by definition because you are giving uh, uh, the, the incentive to demand. So this fact might grant better financing conditions to the green actions when the ship owners go to the banks to ask for the loans. And this uh, need also this enable a connection with the EU financial instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also possible to consider um, possibilities such as modulating the EU support uh, by the global impacts on CO2 because we have the split of the different savings. So CO2 is global, it has a global value, we have to agree on the value, but it has a global value and this could be the, the part of the EU support. So the EU support is modulated by the CO2 actual savings, whereas the member states support could be more focused on the localized impacts, right? because we know that uh, accidents, congestion, and of course, sulfur, uh, uh, they are monetized with different values depending on, on the region. So uh, uh, we should, we could agree on the global value for CO2 and focus the EU support on this CO2 strategy, which also is um, consistent with this decarbonization strategy, which is now supported by the by the EU recently presented uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what we see is that, well, the common approach, we think it's feasible. Of course, there's, there are many things to the debate, but we think it's feasible. It really could uh, uh, act as a catalyst, accelerating the, the, the transport behaving towards the, the greenest uh, uh, behaving possible. It is uh, um, consistent with the regulatory and operational structures of the EU and member state support and consistent with the priorities. And also the case that we use as a sample seems to prove positive impacts. We have discussed this also with in different workshops with experts on externalities calculations, with ship owners, with the road. And of course, we are not saying they say, okay, but, but they feel that they could be a positive approach. So maybe uh, uh, this is also to, to keep debating. Um, yes, the results are based on different assumptions, and this is maybe the main uh, thing for the debate. Uh, uh, there are assumptions throughout all the uh, 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 methodology, and this is why the, the action is intended to the debate. But maybe the most important one is the one regarding to the estimation and monetization of external costs. This is why we uh, decided to, to complement this presentation with the specific presentation of the external cost calculator. The idea behind this is very simple. If you want grants which are based on the actual savings, you need consensus and agreement on how these savings are measured and monetized. So this new approach on how the grants are given needs a, an effort on uh, uh, monetization and estimation of external costs. And we know, and you know, possibly that the Commission, in fact, now is been developing a, a, a another session in the in Brussels regarding the, the update of the handbook of external costs that the Commission is uh, uh, updating since 2024, I think, 2004. 14. So, 14. 14. 14 is the latest update, but the first one 2008. is 2008, 2014. So yes, there is there is a, 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 an effort from the European Union that would be very valuable to this uh, uh, to this approach, uh, which is agree on the methodology for external costs. And of course, ultimately, this approach is needs the validation or let's say the consensus from the institutions, the member states and the stakeholders to, to provide this uh, uh, approach with the legal basis and the funding objective within SEF to complementing, as I said, the funding gap principle, which, for example, the funding gap has proved to be very positive for pilot actions, of course, where there is no market uh, uh, um, situation, but maybe for uh, deployment, for deployment, uh, and you know, pointing to the greenest alternative possible, 
this eco incentive approach would be uh, uh, possible. So uh, I, this is more or less what I, I wanted to share with you as main results of the of the uh, action. I, I give a lot of time to to frame and to let you see where we are, you know, placing our approach within the overall framework. Uh, it, of course, there are many details on technical issues and so on that we can discuss or, or, or you know, feedback later on. And now I give the floor to Carlos to present the external cost calculator as a main uh, uh, outcome of this of this work. Okay. So, Carlos. Yes. Uh, well, I think Antonio, we have eaten quite a lot of time. Yes, I'm sorry. So, um, it's always happened with me. Uh, what we will do is I I'll try to make my presentation much uh, uh, quicker. And just uh, as a reminder, I think the, we will be announcing a web page uh, for the project web page where you can uh, later on download not only the tools are available for, for the market, but also the documentation. and and also, there is a channel for feedback to send messages and comments. Okay, even if this webinar uh, maybe falls short, uh, please use the, the, the web page for for that. Um, okay, so when we come to to, to calculate the external cost of, of th this uh, comparison of the of the motorways of the sea with the road, basically uh, we have, of course, the goal is to, to estimate what is the environmental merit of each mode. And so we designed the calculator to compare the standard cost of the motorway of the sea, the unit or transport unit cost on a motorway of the sea alternative, so versus the road only alternative. And in order to do so, we basically uh, split the, the analysis in three in three uh, parts. First, we have to go to analyze what is the, the transportation work that a ship does and and how many units actually carries. Then we have to value what are the emissions and the socioeconomic impact of each mode. And finally, we come to monetize, okay, and monetize those emissions and, and come out with what is the differential, if the different value. The tool what has been designed, of course, for the project for its own simulation, but in an implementation time, the tool will be used to calculate, to actually calculate the, the, the incentive to be given to every specific line. So I will basically summarize the whole uh, tool on this slide and try to make it uh, um, quicker this way. We basically we will compare. Uh, in this case, you see on the picture we have a rural ship, okay, that does a, a, a route that have a, a certain distance, they navigate at a certain speed, it uses a fuel type, and has the, the 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 let's say the mission abutment technology engines or scrubbers or fuel that uh, characterize its uh, environmental footprint. Of course, in terms of, of uh, transport work, uh, basically the capacity of the ship, the level of occupation, and whether or not it has passengers, we have deducting, we are deducting passengers out of the calculation because we're just comparing freight, okay, freight uh, transport work. So we come out with exactly what, how many trucks are the, uh, transported in every average trip. And then for the trucks, we calculate what is the actual distance the truck cover, what is the, the technology the trucks are using, and what is the, the route, what is the, the route uh, basically give us information on the socioeconomic impact, basically on the congestion or the, uh, the accident levels. So you see, that's basically the, the exercise we do in the in the transportation work. Of course, we also have open a uh, focus on the port calls. When we when we look at the maritime transport, we cannot just say that maritime transport starts at the port, but the maritime transport requires, uh, the, 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 in this case, for a rural transport, the trucks need to access the port and exit the ports. So we have accounting. We are accounting also for the impact of those trucks accessing and exiting the ports. Now, in terms of the, the um, externalities being, being produced, we'll see basically the, the warming uh, CO2 uh, or CO2 equivalent okay, uh, emissions. Then the three main ones that we are looking after is SOx, NOx and particles. But also for, for, the, for the road, we're looking also at congestion, accidents and noise. 
Okay, there are other emissions, that, but they're not really significant in terms of uh, the monetization values. Okay, the last step, we, then we go to the monetization and we we'll see the monetization we're using is basically the latest version of the of the handbook the commission is uh, has prepared in 2014 and we'll be doing that uh, soon with the latest version that has been produced uh, and released by the beginning of the year now accounting for all these costs we get the external cost of the maritime uh, on a track unit and then we see the external cost of the road alternative on a track unit and this comparison this this difference basically what generates the incentive that uh, will be given to every track board in the ship. Okay, so that's how we do it. Now, of course, uh, on the slide, I will not. I will just rush through this. You just see how we are calculating the transportation work. Uh, we see some assumptions. We have to make some assumptions also um, on, on on ship types and occupation and so forth. And we mm, we also. Uh, just I need to click on that. As we say, for the road, we're basically looking at these emissions and these uh, these uh, externalities. Important here is that when we look at the maritime, we are looking at each individual shape on each individual line, okay? Because we actually want to be to measure the merit of that specific uh, effort uh, a ship owner has done on a specific line. Uh, while on the roadside, because the, the, there is a, a pool of operators, of uh, transport operators boarding the ship, and we're just accounting for them what is the average market level uh, in terms of uh, Euro standard that those trucks will be uh, uh, will be using instead. Okay, so that will give us looking at the Euro standard will give us a mix of emissions uh, of of the road. And um, of course, we're taking the assumptions on, on well, how the Euro standard will evolve, and we're taking the latest, the latest uh, calculations on emissions per Euro standard with the real uh, life emissions uh, uh, updated calculations. Um, for the socioeconomical impact, we have assumed what is the congestion, the road, the, 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 the routes that we're taking. Basically, the good news here is that uh, normally in the International freight cities are not involved. Metropolitan areas somehow, but not not the the actual urban areas. But on the maritime, we look at the typical uh, fuel consumption curve of a ship, and then we look into. We can make some assumption because, of course, each ship may have its specific technology, but we have uh, average the the typical technologies a ship, especially development technology, the ships can can use for reduction of CO2, SOx, and NOx and particles. Out of this, basically, of course, as I said before, we account for, for the four calls and we come to the monetization. The monetization is the key factor here. And we are taking the, the recommendations of, of the European manuals. And as I said, respecting the 2018 update for, for the last version. It's only on CO2 where we have been very conservative or a bit conservative. The, the, the recommendation was to use uh, 90 euros in 2010. And we finally calculated the impact, uh, the, the our model with 34, because there was not clear consensus on this figure. Uh, the European Investment Bank was more conservative as well. Um, but we have done the simulation of what would be the impact of uh, data of changing this value in, in our results. So of course, then we go, we monetize all of the missions, both on the sea and on the on the on the road, and. This, this is basically what the tool does for you. The tool will look into a line. It will, in the, in, we see in the left panel, we have, you choose the line, you choose the, the, the key uh, uh, indicators on ship size, speed, uh, fuel, environment technologies, and so forth. And then you get the calculation, the detailed calculations on units and, and costs of all the, the, the externalities. And on the right, you see the, um, the results. Basically, we see two columns. The first column is the maritime impact. The second column is the port impact. Those two columns together are the allocation of cost to the motorways of the sea alternative. And on the right side, the third column is the alternative road uh, uh, externalities that we are comparing against. Okay, so if we just look how the tool works, let me just uh, jump into the 
this is the let me make this uh, okay bigger maybe what we have here is uh, I can choose a list of, of lines we have simulated all the lines in our markets but I'm using for for the sake of this example an average line that has uh, as 25 uh, geographical distance of course the, the big big difference of the lines is how much uh, what is the savings in terms of kilometers uh, because of the art of the maritime and the uh, route then we, we take a, a sip of, of a certain size in this case we are looking at, at uh, 2800 lane meters at the 70 percent level of occupancy and and we see if this ship was uh, to sail uh, on current basically switch to, to maritime diesel and have no other alternative in terms of, of no other abutment technology we see that this ship with that will carry at 18 knots will carry uh, 131 truck units this truck the, the results let me just make it a bit uh, bigger I just hide the numbers and show you the table you see that the results show basically that the transport, the externalities of this route, or average route with this as ship size, are very much equivalent to the road. So there is not a big saving. It's only 0 0.7 euros difference. So what should be done in terms of improving the the, uh, the externalities, reducing the externalities of the road? And there are many, many alternatives. Okay, one, one alternative would be to increase the size of the ship. Of course, uh, if, if this, instead of using 2,800 2, lane meters, we go for a much bigger ship, which uh, as we see in currently, this is the trend, the 4,000 lane meters, that will be 187, economy of scale here is helping. You see that we have an improvement or a difference of 43 euros, okay? Uh, alternatively, you could have also other me methods of uh, improving the, the performance. Uh, one will be to reduce the speed if it's possible. We see here we could just lower the speed and say I, I, we do the line at 15 knots. Okay, that would also generates uh, an improvement, and that improvement is measured in 25 euros. Uh, or alternative, alter, the another alternative will be to use just stick with a heavy fuel oil with 2% sulfur, but implement. Of course, you see that if that is done. If the ships are maintained as today, we see here that the, the externality here is negative for the maritime because mainly because of this high value of the SOX and, and, the, and, the, and the NOx. But if you implement a scrubber and a SCR technology on the ship to reduce sulfur and NOx, you see that the ships get a, a, a better uh, behavior. And, and again, the comparison throws out 64 euros. Uh, another way of achieving this, or another way of improving this, will be to use coal ironings, for instance, and reduce the port access. Okay, so the port access you see here. The port access, of course, this part is generated by by the ship on during the port call, and on all that are the trucks. These gray lines are the congestion and and accidents and a noise produced in the port access. Just by using coal ironing, you see that you can reduce that. Okay, so the ship owner has many ways to achieve a positive, a positive uh, a difference against the road, and and as we saw in our example, example we have simulated, we're using LNG as the the, the technology that deals. Let's just get the colliding out; it will not be needed. Uh, this is ge generates for this average line the highest of the of the differences. Okay, so that will receive the higher incentives. So this is how the tool works. Uh, I encourage you to, to play with it. It will be available for download in our webpage. And just coming back to the results of this, and just to give a, a bit of a, uh, what is the, the outcome of this analysis. Uh, we see the the road and the two lines on the bottom are a, a uh, we have broken down all the different components, the cost components of the externalities of our average line road trip, the one that we just saw before. And you see that the, for the road, basically, uh, the road since Euro, Euro 2 to Euro 6 it has done a great improvement. So it went down almost from 275 euros per trip in terms of external cost to roughly 150. 
okay? On the maritime side, with the four, the four bars uh, on the top, we see that the all uh, uh, fuel, heavy fuel oil consumption uh, uh, with no abatement technology was very much uh, above the 200. So it was better back in, 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 the, in the days against road uh, Euro 2. But as your road has improved, now the, the next move has to be taken by the maritime uh, ships, maritime uh, mode. So one, one way will be just by adjusting to the, the, the NGO and reducing the sulfur significantly. Uh, that will be one way. Another way, as we have shown and proved in the, in, the, in the calculator, is to go and implement a scrubber and SCR technology or to go with uh, LNG. This, any of these two alternatives will basically give the sea, uh, again, a, um, a difference in terms of externality against the road and that's basically what the, what the project is saying. Is, is the, the very basic, they say that they, just to comply with the regulation, ship owner could state an NGO, but no one is, is, is really requesting to go uh, beyond tire two level on, on NOx reduction. But if they do that, or if they go LNG, they will produce a much better uh, result on the, on, the, on the environmental footprint. And, and that's what the incentive is basically aiming to, to uh, support. Okay, and finally, we have some time for questions. Uh, Alexio, uh, I try to do the, our best. And, and so let's, let's, let's see what questions are there for, from the audience. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Antonio and Carlos. It was quite um, comprehensive. Yes, we have uh, a couple of uh, questions. Okay, question time. So, and specifically two, two, two questions. The first one is, uh, uh, you discussed uh, about a number of uh, possible environmental improvements in, uh, in, the, in the maritime domain, and you mentioned also that the, the, the scheme in itself is not only meant for the, sh for the vessel side, for the ship side, but generally can speak, speak, it's more general. One, one question is, is about uh, which kind of uh, um, which kind of uh, trends in the technological framework uh, you see as a, a co as a cooperation for ports in terms of this scheme? Which kind of uh, uh, technologies could we uh, then included in the scheme for the um, for the ports it, for the port themselves? This is the first question. The second okay. is the second is which kind of follow up. You are you planning for uh, for the scheme in in the near future? So, I leave to you, Carlos and Antonio. Yeah, I'll take the first, and I leave Antonio for the second. In terms of the ports, basically, um, the, the the key the, the key role the ports have to play is is twofold. One is port access, how how port access interferes or not or does not interfere with the road uh, and the city uh, traffic. Okay. There is a big difference in the European ports, even in our region, from ports that are more uh, have more difficulty in terms of more impact on the on the population than others. Some are more industrial ports or or uh, urban ports. So the way the ports have uh, infrastructure for the road access will, will reduce the impact. <clears throat> and the second one is during the port call is basically uh, the onshore power supply. Okay, we think this is the, the the trend will be for for ships to connect to the power uh, offshore power supply, or in some cases we've seen uh, in, in the Mediterranean some some ship owners are already betting for uh, hybrid uh, vessels that will charge batteries uh, with their own power on the sailing, and then use the batteries for the port call operations. So they will completely reduce the, the emissions at the port. You know, so the, those are basically the, let's say the three trends, port access, onshore power supply, and, and onboard batteries. Okay, and uh, regarding the follow-up of the scheme, uh, in our opinion, the main um, target would be to find, um, to find, um, uh, the place within the funding instruments of the Commission uh, to uh, possibly submit this type of schemes for uh, EU co-financing. 
And this means having the member states, um, um, let's say, uh, um, involved into this approach, so uh, uh, agreed with this approach and also the, the Commission. And in my opinion, the main, this is why I tried to put the accent in the first slides, more in the conceptual thing, is uh, to understand that this approach is mainly to complement the funding gap approach. So this is based, this is modulating grants on the actual uh, environmental merits that are attained by a particular action. So it's not considering the financial risks uh, of the investment in a, of a particular investment. This is a change, a little bit of a change in the approach, which of course has to be debated. But in my opinion, this would be uh, the follow-up to discuss whether this type of approaches could be uh, accepted for the ambitious uh, environmental challenges that we have ahead. And this is based on the outcome that uh, the LNG investments, just taking them as example of our case, could be could uh, could happen that the LNG investments would not be supported because there is no enough funding gap to do so. Whereas they are the main contributors to the external cost savings. So which is the main target? It is environment or it is you know compensating costs of the financial uh, uh, financial cost so yes so the next steps would be to debate let's say on this main idea and of course to agree as a main consequence on a methodology to measure and monetize and to be all agree on uh, the how this merit is attained and how this merit is measured and monetized Thanks a lot, uh, Antonio. And then, uh, before going to the last uh, part, uh, being the polls, uh, we received another one. Uh, I think I could answer to this one. Uh, the, the, the question is, is that a line connecting Spain to North Africa could be uh, eligible in a way for the incentive scheme? Uh, I think the general answer is that the, the scheme is, uh, is a generic one, so it could be applied wherever, also uh, geographically speaking. The fact to be eligible or not, uh, it depends from the, you know, for, from the, uh, the, 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 the program uh, that is going to in, in, uh, embrace this scheme and, and the policy behind. Uh, so that that is something that could. It, it depends. I mean, it really depends. What if I may, know, yeah. yeah, yeah, Antonio, go for. If I may just to to clarify, this is of course this will be part of the of the, you know, in case this is uh, accepted to be eligible in further. The calls and so on, but typically what it is not considered under the second level, I think, is investments in, in third countries. But as far as the line on the ship owner is European and the road uh, holder is European based, that would be eligible, I think. So it's not, yes. not we, of course, this is on the commission to discuss with the person, but, but, but typically the budget, the, the support, the, the, the incentive would be granted to European uh, companies, uh, roads and maritime, uh, uh, irrespective of the, you know, and of course, between lines that are connecting, you know, member states within the EU or at least one member state. That, that, but, but I think that that could be possible. Okay, thanks a lot. Let's go to the to the last part. We have prepared for uh, for the audience two polls. Uh, to uh, you can answer directly um, online. So Valeria is going to to send it. So the first one is uh, is already this one. So would you be favorable to grants based on actual and demonstrated external cost saving savings attained by the action. So this is uh, the first question. So answer yes, no. So favorable to grants based on uh, demonstrated external cost savings. So this is the basis of the. You have uh, 30 seconds, <laughs> even less because it's it's yes or no. <laughs> so this is it.
So these are the results already, uh, Alexio. Can you hear me now? Yes, now, now, Alexia, I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was, I was mute. So, um, the, the second question Are you keen to the main? Megafabric eco bonus approach, giving the possibility to grants for the users of the action instead of the promoters, meaning, for example, to the trucks and not to the ship owners that are anyhow improving their environmental performances through some investment. Yes, Alex, if, if I may, this is not uh, saying that only giving the only, uh, you know, um, grants. Uh, through the users, but just giving the possibility to complement the typical approach of grants that uh, yeah, from yeah. The past years. this is the demand approach given by the Italian Eco Bonus right. that we took as you know a principle. We have also the same uh, the same answer. So it seems that you you were quite convincing in your presentation, Antonio and Carlos, because we have again the 100 percent of the of the uh, yes uh, as, uh, as as an answer. So we are we are at the end after one hour and uh, ten minutes, a little bit more. We are at the end of the, our webinar. I leave you, Antonio, with some for a little bit of closing remarks before closing. Uh, please, well, Antonio. Very rapidly, just because we are uh, over time. Uh, first of all, I thank you, uh, thank to all the participants for the for the interest and for joining the webinar. And I, I would just uh, remark that these uh, outcomes that we try to summarize very quickly will be more detailed explained in the web page with documents. And uh, uh, we, when we produce the final documents, you will have the opportunity to. Uh, uh, analyze with more detail the assumptions and you know the whole narrative behind this uh, this project. But uh, finally, the the goal is to debate. Is we are just trying to put into the debate for the coming years a new approach which could stimulate and accelerate the I would say very ambitious uh, challenges that we have ahead. Uh, uh, this net zero, let's say. CO2 economy by 2050 that the Commission uh, uh, set uh, or you know proposed uh, two weeks ago, or the IMO strategy on CO2 reduction. This is really very ambitious targets, and we think that mm, we should uh, stimulate uh, for the greenest and cleanest uh, behavior possible. And this is, let's say, the main um, goal of the of the. Uh, proposal of the action, just to debate on further approach. Could be this one or could be others. And also to, to focus on the need of having external cost calculations. We are giving money and we think that we should be uh, able to measure the outcomes and the savings of, of, of this uh, support that we are giving. So just to, this is start. So thank you, Alexio. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Antonio. Thanks a lot, Carlos. Thanks a lot to all the participants. Um, I, I think uh, even if the project is at the end, I'm quite sure that this is not the last chapter about uh, eco incentives and uh, something will happen in 2019. So I, we will keep you posted in uh, all our communication tools. So thanks for, for coming again. Have a nice day. Have a nice uh, Christmas time also. And uh, let's Let's follow us in, uh, in the next uh, 2019 with new webinars that uh, we think that could be uh, interesting as uh, this one was certainly, uh, was certainly. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice day and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>